What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I want to show you guys how we can bring Olympic files into Unreal Engine, similar how I did this. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now that project that I showed you guys, that was an Unreal Engine logo animation I did for Epic Games a while back. And inside that animation, I actually brought some of the packs that were from Pixel Labs. They have a flag pack over there. I brought it into Unreal Engine so that I could get those waving flags there. And so I wanna show you exactly how I got those waving flags into Unreal Engine because they're Olympic fouls. And actually, if you're interested in the exact flag pack that I'm using, it's from the Pixel Labs. So if you go to the website right here, you can scroll down and you can see a whole plethora of different type of flags that they have. They have some tethered flags. They have some flags that are used for, you know, like races and things of that nature. So they have a lot of variety in here, which I thought was really cool because I didn't have to go through and actually make these flags from scratch. So I would suggest, you know, if you need something on the fly, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'd go check it out. And actually, I do have an affiliate link with the Pixel Lab. So if you do want to purchase anything on the website, make sure you click on the link link in my description it helps the channel out a lot and so the flag that i'm actually going to be using is this one right here banner 05 because this is what it looks like when you're at the end of a finish line just like in the pug dash game that i created there so i'm actually going to exit this out and as you can see we're starting inside of cinema 4d and so whenever you download those flag packs they'll actually give you olympic files and c4d files and what i like to do is actually get everything acclimated in c4d before i even get into unreal engine and so what I'm going to do here is once I'm inside of Cinema 4D, I'm actually going to make a new material down here in the lower left hand corner. And I'm going to name this one flag and I'm going to double click on it just to bring the material editor up. And I'm going to start with the color channel here. So I'm going to actually go down to my Windows Explorer and I have this finish line image that I made previously. So I'm just going to actually click and drag that into here. I'm going to click no right there. And then for my reflectance, I'm actually going to remove the default and I'm going to add the GGX. I just like doing this because I think it looks better inside of Unreal Engine. I played around with the different acclimations in there and this is the one that I actually like. And so I have everything set up to that way I need it here. So I'm actually going to exit this out and then I can actually delete the default one there. And I'm just going to click and drag this into here, which is his banner. So this banner right here, this is actually the flag one right there. And you can see that it's actually the Olympic file that Pixel Labs already made. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to make sure that it looks fine with the UV maps and everything in here. So I'm just going to adjust it like so. Let me actually go back to the beginning here. And I'm actually going to raise this up a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm actually just seeing if this is going to look fine inside of Cinema 4D because the UV maps are important once you bring them in the Unreal Engine in which the Pixel Labs, I believe they did all the work there for the UV maps, but I just like to make sure that everything's gonna look fine before I bring it over because the UV maps are important there. So it looks like maybe something around those lines there. Let me see, let me adjust it over just a tad bit. And there we go. So I'm gonna actually hit play. You can actually see it playing back in real time in Cinema 4D here and everything looks nice. Like I like the gloss on there and everything and Everything is holding up pretty well. And so the next step from here is actually a two-parter. First part is I'm going to take all the Olympic files, export those out separately, and then I'm going to save out a separate file, a Cinema 4D file, just for the pose and everything else that's not an Olympic file. And so what I want to do now is I'm actually going to select these three right here. So now that I have these selected, I'm actually going to come over to file, come down to export, and I'm going to export this right here, an Olympic ABC file. And this is gonna be important right here. I wanna make sure that I have some stuff selected in here. So I'm actually gonna go through one by one here for you guys. So first I'm gonna start off with settings. I wanna make sure that I have selection only. I wanna have splines because we do have some splines in here and global coordinates. And then for animation, this is important as well. Usually it's gonna start at frame zero, but what we wanna do is bring it up to frame one. 
And the reason I'm starting with frame one is this is just from experience of me exporting out stuff from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. I've done a lot of experimenting over the years and this is what seems to work. If I do it at zero frames, it always messed up. And so this is the way that I found works best. And so what I'm gonna do here is for end frame, I'm only gonna do 100 frames just for tutorial purposes. This is actually a 600 frame animation, but I don't wanna export out a huge Olympic file because the more frames, the bigger the size of the Olympic file. And so for optional data, everything here is fine. I'm just gonna leave it at default. So I'm gonna click okay. And then I actually made a folder called ABC, that's for Olympic, and I'm gonna rename this flag like so. And I'm just gonna click on save. And there we go. So if I go over to Windows Explorer here, go to my ABC folder, you can see that we have an Olympic file and this one is actually 674 megabytes. So you can imagine how big the file would have been if we did the full 600. So let me close back out of this. Actually, I'm just gonna minimize this and I'm actually going to delete all three of these files here. And I'm gonna leave the material here because I want this to come over with my C4D project file. And so on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit Control D and let me bring this up here for the project settings. And we wanna click on this tab right here called Cineware. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna save Polygon Cache. I'm gonna save Material Cache. And I'm actually gonna multiply these by four just to make these 4K. And then I'm gonna leave it as a PNG. For depth, I'm gonna do 16 bit. And then I'm actually just gonna make this zero frames because all I'm doing is bringing in this geometry and I wanna bring in this material file. So everything looks good for my Cineware settings here. So from here, I'm just gonna save it out as a simple Cinema 4D file. So just say project as, and I'm just gonna name this one tutorial underscore UE for Unreal Engine. And then I'm just gonna save it like so. And that's all there is to it. So the next step from here, I'm actually gonna be using Unreal Engine 5. So let me show you how I'm gonna set my scene up. So right here, I'm just gonna actually open up Unreal Engine 5 early access double click on this and that's going to bring us to the Unreal Engine project browser. So what I like to use is this one right here, the default for film, video and live events. And I'm going to leave it as a blank file. I'm going to come down here to project location, click on browse folder and I'm actually just going to put it into my tutorial folder here. So I'm just going to select folder and then right here I can actually turn on ray tracing for project name. I'm just going to name this one maybe tutorial underscore flag. And I always use underscores when doing Unreal Engine stuff because it doesn't like spaces for its naming convention. So that's just a tip there, always use underscores. So I'm gonna use the blank template right here and I'm gonna hit create. And once we're in Unreal Engine, we're gonna activate the C4D plugin so that we can start bringing stuff over. And so what I'm gonna do now, I have Unreal Engine 5 opened up. I'm gonna come over here to edit and I'm gonna come down here to plugins. And then right here, make sure I have all selected right here. And right here under search, I'm gonna type in C4D and that's gonna bring up the Datasmith C4D importer in which I'm gonna click enable here. And I'm just gonna click yes. It's saying that it's a beta version, but everything should be fine. So I'm gonna click yes here. And then I'm gonna click on restart. Okay, so now we have our scene restarted. I'm actually gonna close out the plugins window down here. It's just gonna say project file out of date. Just gonna click update there. Then from here, I'm gonna come over to my content browser Pull this up a little bit because when I'm actually, actually let me come over to settings and make the thumbnail sizes a little bit smaller. There we go, like so. So I'm actually gonna right click in here, make a new folder. I'm gonna name this one ABC so I can bring in my Limbic file. So I'm gonna come over to Windows Explorer. I'm actually gonna just click. Actually, let me come back over here, double click on this because I just wanna click and drag that ABC file into there. So I'm gonna click and drag it. And this is gonna bring up the Limbic cache import options. So what I'm gonna do is actually select this right here. Could make sure that everything is selected under a Limbic under import type. Instead of static mesh, I wanna do geometry cache experimental. So I'm gonna click on this right there. And for here, for frame start, I'm actually gonna leave it at zero. I know whenever we exported it out at Cinema 4D, we did frame one, but when we're importing, we wanna leave it at frame zero. Don't ask me why, it just works though. And then there's one more setting down here. I'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says preset under conversion. I'm actually gonna make this Autodesk 3D Max and that makes sure that everything is gonna be right side up and the axis is gonna be correct. So I'm gonna click on import from here and this should just take a few moments to import everything. Again, we only did 100 frames. If we would've did 600, this would've probably took a little bit to import. 
Okay, so it looks like we have our Limbic file right here imported. And so the next thing I wanna do is actually bring in my C4D file in which I'm gonna come over to content, come down here where it says Datasmith, because remember we activated that. So I'm gonna click on Datasmith. I'm gonna find my Cinema 4D file. So it should be under my tutorial. Here we go. Tutorial underscore UE. That's what I named it. I'm gonna click on open. And then I'm just gonna put it in here in just the default content folder. Click OK. And that's gonna bring up the Datasmith import options in which I'm gonna leave everything clicked right here just by default. So I'm gonna click import and there we go. So let me pull this down a little bit so we can actually move around our scene. So you can see that we have our poles here and what we're gonna need now is the flag. So actually let me pull up my content browser, come over to my ABC folder. And I'm just gonna left click and drag that into my scene. And we don't see it here yet, but the axes that we had inside of Cinema 4D, like I like starting at axis zero because once I import everything and I just bring it over to zero, everything lines up exactly as it should be. And so over here, inside of my row outliner, I'm gonna click on flag. Let me pull this up for my details panel. And right here under location, I'm gonna click on this arrow all the way to the right and boom, so everything lines up. So whenever you're using a limbic files, wherever you have it in your scene, it's gonna be 000 inside of Unreal Engine. So like I said, inside of C4D, I try to make sure that I do everything in the world center. And that way it's easier to line everything up when I bring it into Unreal Engine. So now that we have everything in here, the next thing I wanna do now is actually put my material on here, which I'm gonna come over to that C4D folder that we had imported. Remember it's called tutorial underscore UE and it brings over a materials folder. So I'm gonna double click on this. And remember, I left my material inside my C4D project. And the reason that I did that is because I like the way that the Datasmith importer actually builds a material object for us. So if I double click on this, I'll show you what I mean. So you can see right here, instead of us having to go through and manually do everything, it actually brings over a parameters group from C4D, which I think is really nice because it takes a lot of guesswork out. We don't have to work with any nodes or anything like that. And so everything that we need is in here. And actually you can turn on and off stuff as you need it, which I think is really nice. So that's my tip. I usually like build my materials out in C4D and then importing them over. And that way everything is nice whenever I'm working at Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna actually minimize this for right now. And I'm just gonna click and drag this onto my flag. And as you can see, it didn't bring over everything that we did inside of Cinema 4D. Remember I said when we're in Unreal Engine, we're gonna have to redo this anyway. So again, let me bring this back up for my materials. And actually let me scroll all the way down here to my UV settings. So I'm just gonna click on the offset UV and the tile UV, and basically just manually line this up. So if I drag this over, like so, you can see that it's moving it, but actually let me do this first. So let me do 0.5 maybe, something like that. And actually, let me move this over in my window so we can see it better. So I'm just gonna drag this over and kind of eyeball it to what I think looks good. So something like that for this tutorial, and it's actually in reverse here. So actually let me hit save let me turn my camera around in my viewport so we can see the front of it in which there's the front, but it's a little bit dark. So what I'm gonna do is just actually go to my light source and I'm not gonna relight everything. I'm just gonna actually use the sun source that's in by default. There we go. Something like that. So there we go. Now we can see everything It's not perfect, but I'm not gonna spend the time to make it perfect. The next step I wanna show you guys is how we can actually get this Alembic file moving real time inside of Unreal Engine. And in order to do that, we actually need to make a sequencer. So what I'm gonna do now is actually come up to my cinematics, come down to add level sequence, and I'm just gonna leave it at the default name for this example purposes. I'm just gonna click on save, and that brings up our sequence window. And let me find my Alembic file, which is this right here, flag. So I'm just gonna left click and drag it into here. And if I play this, you can actually see it's not doing anything in which I need to add a geocache. So right here on my Limbic file, I'm actually gonna click on track. I'm gonna click right here where it says geocache and boom. Now you can see inside of our sequencer, it actually brought in a timeline here. So now if I click play, there we go. So we have our Limbic file. Let me actually bring this over to 100. 
I'm gonna clip it there and just have it loop. And then let me pull this down so we can see it. But there we go. So now we have our UVs and our texture and everything on our limbic file. Everything is playing back in real time. And that's basically how I did it for my Pug Dash intro for Unreal Engine, bringing in the flags and everything as a limbic files. So hopefully this helped you guys out. I've had a couple of questions recently asking me how I bring a limbic files into Unreal Engine. I've showed you guys how I do it using X particles, but some people wanted to do other stuff, maybe like cloth simulations and stuff like that. And so this is exactly how you would do a cloth simulation from Cinema 40 and Unreal Engine. So if this helped you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. Leave me a big thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. And again, I do have an affiliate link with the Pixel Lab. So if you pick up any packs on there, make sure you use my affiliate link and it helps out with the channel. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care. What up, what up? Wimbush here.